You don't have to be a painter to love Glidden. Because it's easy to try on a new look before you buy it. Glidden gets you going. I'm Aaron Britt, senior editor at Dwell Magazine, and I'm here in Zeeland, Michigan at Herman Miller for the third part of our video series on color theory, The Full Spectrum. I'll be chatting with Susan Lyons, creative consultant for colors, materials, and finishes at Herman Miller to understand just how color plays into their designs. To what degree at Herman Miller are material and color married? I think that goes back to our founding fathers and, and the way that Eames and Nelson really approached materials was that the material should speak for itself as much as possible. So we try to avoid coating things unnecessarily. We want the material to have its own character. So, you know, it starts with the molded plywood where basically the idea here is if, if the material is plywood, let's celebrate what plywood is. And, you know, we continue on with things like this where, uh, again, aluminum, which is a fabulous material and often gets coated, we just thought, you know, aluminum is spectacular on its own. So we often try to develop finishes that will bring out the, the sort of natural beauty of the material. Obviously this green, this is so splashy, mm -hmm. but we look at something like any number of these super neutral colors. How do, you, how do you achieve the right neutral? That is one of the hardest, hardest things because you know, finding the absolute perfect neutral, it's kind of the holy grail, right? So you want that exact right amount of red, yellow, blue, and green mixing in a, the most felicitous way, and it's really hard to do. This is a, the beam of our new set two chair, which is a, a, a plastic part. These just are painted, and what we do is we just make things and we try them. You really need to see how the light is going to interact with this part and you know what the, the color actually looks like on the form. It's interesting because it's both a lounge chair and an office chair. I think the whole issue of, of context is really, really important because the object never is sitting alone in a room. It's always residing with all of the other things. So we want to basically provide enough flexibility with the products that we're making so that, again, not to be prescriptive to say we believe this is the only way this chair should be seen, but rather to say, knock yourself out. You, you imagine there probably weren't focus groups and test panels and whatnot. How did Charles and Ray Eames, when developing a piece of furniture for Herman Miller, figure out which color they wanted? The Eames talked about this idea of the way it should be-ness, that they just had as a, a quality, set, as a as quality, a, sort of that, Aristotelian idea. That, yeah, exactly, and that you would that you would make things and and keep making things and keep iterating until you knew it had that, it was the way it should be, and they knew it when they saw it. Yeah. Well, and yet they still must have tested many many versions of say gray to get the right gray. Yeah, I think they had very strong ideas about, about what those colors were, but I think they, what I like about their approach, it wasn't a sort of prescriptiveness. I mean, design is an iterative process where you're constantly exploring and you don't really want to know what the end result is because it's about exploration. The story of color at Herman Miller is inextricably tied to Alexander Girard, who was working in the early 60s. I mean, Girard's influence is huge. I think he had such an intuitive sense of color and a joyfulness about how he used color. Um, I think prior to Girard's work, the landscape was kind of international style, white, black, and gray, and, you know, a little bit serious. And I think what Girard really brought to the table was a sense of playfulness, um, a sense of joyfulness, uh, curiosity. He introduced a palette, and uh, as you can see here, I mean, it, it's, it's just a rainbow of color. Um, he also developed a series of wonderful graphic textiles. He just felt that 
It was important to have color around you, to have pattern around you because it was nourishing. And people liked it? They loved it. <laughs> they absolutely loved it. The greenhouse is all about sustainability. It's this model for what a lead building could be. To what extent is sustainability expressed in Herman Miller's choice of color? I mean, I think the way we, we think about developing color and the process that we have to develop all of our products is, um, is kind of the microcosm of the larger commitment that Herman Miller has to be a sustainable company. From the very beginning, this company has really understood that it's part of the world and that it, it needs to be um, not only responsible, but actually be a leader in terms of sustainable product development. The building is quite extraordinary. It's a factory. It's completely naturally lit. It's surrounded by natural wildflower field. All of the habitat has been restored, so honeybees actually have relocated back to that facility. We make honey from the, from the beehives. So it's, it's a very holistic uh, way of looking at the making of things and looking at how a company should operate in the world. Herman Miller is so well known for these mid-century classics, yet the majority of the business you do today is in systems, be it an office, a hospital. How do you think about color in the workplace or in a commercial setting versus how you think of it in a residential setting? One of the things that is very important to us is the idea of longevity, that these products are built to last. And so you want to make sure that they have a palette that allows that to happen. Are we going to do hot pink? leather or veneer, no. I mean, what you want is a sort of honest palette of neutrals that are going to have longevity. I mean, I, I tend to think of it like the, the food pyramid, where, you know, at the top maybe are plastics and um, veneers, where you, you don't really need that many choices, you just need beautiful ones. And then as you go down to more products that are more malleable and more flexible and maybe a little bit more fashion-driven like textiles, you offer a wide breadth of products. So many great designers have worked at Herman Miller and sort of left their color stamp on the company. How do you see that process continuing into the future? The whole idea of forecasting color, to me, that's you might as well just throw a dart at a dartboard because I, <laughs> I feel like it, it, it's too disconnected from the product itself. It just doesn't make sense. What we're doing now is looking at new materials and those materials will start to inform our palettes because I, I, to say, well, it'll be red, I don't know. I mean, it you really... You have to figure out what the new material wants to be. Right, exactly. So we just keep trying things until, until we get there. So I would say we, we don't have a color theory so much as we have a color practice. And we practice and practice and practice <laughs> until we get there.